Hi, Wendy. Hey, Amanda. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks good. Good. Good to hear. Welcome, everyone, to Coffee Talk Moms. And today on the show, we have Rania Mancarios, the CEO of Crime Stoppers of Houston. So thank you for being here, Rania. Thank you for having me. It's so good to see you guys. Absolutely. We're thrilled to have you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I am a, a mom of three and dealing with sort of all the questions that we're all dealing with, grappling with regarding going back to school. Um, I'm an attorney with a master's degree in marriage and family therapy. Um, Boston native, born and raised, uh, but my husband's a, a, a diehard Texan. And I think when he asked me to marry him, it was like, I, he was here. I met, we met in Boston. Um, he was doing his residency and I met him while he was doing his residency. And he said, look, I love you, but there's no chance of me ever leaving Texas. So, um, I was like, well, that's really romantic, but I ended up in Texas <laughs> and, um, wanted to work in the nonprofit sector and came across Crime Stoppers. Didn't know much about it, but the name was really not great. And I said, well, what, don't get it. And I'm not sure what they do. And I went and uh, interviewed and absolutely fell in love with the mission. That was 2006 and I've never left, so. Wow. That's incredible. Um, and we're gonna get to, you know, you can explain um, more about Crime Stoppers, but we're gonna um, get right into the, the interview, which will feed into what Crime Stoppers does. Um, so we've been hearing from the Houston Trafficking Rescue Alliance um, and Children at Risk that there's just been an increase in outright ads for juvenile sex trafficking uh, during COVID, during this time. Um, you know, there's a lot of time spent um, in the house and online, and there's a, a decrease in, you know, personal interaction. So we've heard that there is, um, I guess, this surge in sex trafficking amongst juveniles. Um, how do we make sure that children know the dangers of interacting with strangers online and recognize the signs of grooming? You know, it's, it's probably the most important question any mom, any parent can be asking today. And I'll start by saying, you know, we talk to families all over the city, really now all over the state and all over the country. And they'll say, yeah, these sex trafficking cases are so horrific. My heart, our hearts break for these kids, you know, um, but it's just not an issue. You know, we're so thankful that's not an issue we have to worry about. And I always stop and say, oh, I mean, okay, why? Why are you, why are you saying that's not an issue you have to worry? And say, oh, no, we live in a great neighborhood. Our kids go to private schools. You know, it's just not an issue for us. And then I always ask the follow-up, well, do your kids have a cell phone, a smartphone? And it's like, well, of course they do. Well, that right there makes your child a potential target for um, exploitation and, and, and actually sex trafficking. It's important that parents understand that how it happens, what it looks like, what the myths are, and how their very own kids could be targeted. We deal with these cases all the time. We'll see predators that have followed, you know, look at your kids' social media if they're on social media. Look at who's following them. How many of those people do they really, really, really know? And I mean, not like, oh, no, 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 mom, this is, you know, Lindsay's uh, cousin's best friend. Lindsay and I have a mutual contact. No, no. I mean, like, really know the contact, can put a face to the name, have seen them in person. It's not a high percentage. So you have these people that are following our children on all their different platforms that, you know, Snapchat, for example, has something called a snap map that if your child hasn't gone and actively put themselves in ghost mode, shows exactly where they are in real time on a map. And so when you have predators that have targeted one of, one of, one of our children, they will spend time. They'll spend a, we've seen cases where they'll spend a year just following them on social media. They'll find a way to create an entry into this child's life. It will be a friend, maybe somebody you're not familiar with that starts to come in, befriend your child, maybe introduce them to things that are a little different outside of your family rules, family dynamics, um, starts to desensitize them, starts to isolate them, and eventually creates um, enough of a, of a discord to what we say capitalize on them. Um, and for parents who think that this just could never happen to them, sadly, we've seen case after case after case where this really does happen. Traffickers know that they can make a lot of money off of everyday kids. And they also know that parents don't think it's a possibility. So it creates a great gap for them and a great area for them to step in. So we say have age appropriate conversations, um, know the risks yourself, 
if you feel like your child's too young to have a conversation like this, it's fine. But then don't go and hand them a smartphone where they have full access to the world because we want our kids to do everything. We don't want anybody living in fear or being paranoid, but we want to at least our, equip our children with every tool that they may need. Um, and that some of those conversations go to not just who your connections are, um, and how you share your settings, but what you share, you know, you don't need to tell everybody you fought with your parents or you hate your life right now, or you're broke up with your boyfriend or girlfriend or your best friend's the worst, or nobody understands you. I mean, some of that content really does give predators an entry into your, into your child's life. So there's a lot of important conversations to be had. So is that mostly then through social media, you'd say that they, um, if it's online, that they're finding it like the popular apps, like, you know, I guess Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, is there anything else like, I don't know, that they could sneak in through that we don't might not think of? So gaming, gaming oh, yeah. forms for boys or girls, you know, I mean, of the parents watching how many of your, your sons right now, you know, or spent the night on Fortnite or any of these right. gaming platforms, um, they think they're chatting with a girl, their same age, really oh, cute from a neighboring right. city, and they're not. Um, we had a case in Houston not too long ago where an 11 year old said, mom, can you please drop me off the Galleria? I'm about to meet one of my friends that I, I've been playing with for the longest time in Fortnite. The mom said, okay. Um, and then she felt like, wait, let me ask, so who are you meeting? And oh, my friend, whomever, um, I don't know this friend. Who's this friend? Oh no, he lives in Michigan. He's flying in and we're gonna meet at the mall. Oh, wow. And she said, your 11 year old friend from Michigan's flying in to meet you at the gallery and you want me to drop? And yeah, mom, can you drop? And she said, well, that doesn't, that doesn't sound right. And so, of course it ended up not being an 11 year old. It was an adult male who was waiting to meet this young boy. But we're seeing this across mainly social media platforms. The notion of children maybe being abducted in midday is not something we're seeing, um, but we are seeing encounters at places where kids hang out. So if it's not social media platforms or gaming platforms, um, places where kids congregate on, online, we are seeing predators try to loop their way into college parties, high school parties, high school hangouts, the local, you know, coffee shop, places where they know that kids will be and will sit for hours and won't really will have their, they'll have their guard down and, and be okay making conversation, the local mall. Um, so it's, it is really important that parents understand that these conversations have to be had. I have another question just, and this is, might be naive and I just like, I don't even want to know the answer but i know that we have so when let's say like they groom you know the child are they abducting them once they finally um or are they kind of desensitizing them to the point where they can come back home and then they're or maybe a mixture of both or it's, it's a mixture of both and it's such a good question it's actually a huge question um we've seen cases where predators have um started well made agreements with girls in school and they will literally traffic them out during the school day um, and the girls will come right back home parents have no idea what's going on but we've also seen situations where the predators are watching our kids they're watching 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 desensitizing creating a relationship isolating them so that these kids willingly walk out of the front doors of their homes um, with every intention of going to meet the trafficker of course these kids have made a decision not knowing at all what, what is about to happen to them. Um, but in the moment, they've willfully gone. And these predators are really, really smart. I mean, these are uh, crime rings run by, we call them CEOs and CFOs at this point. They're businessmen and women who understand how much money can be made. They understand the laws. They understand the, the, tip, the, the tricks and tips they need to use to gain access to your child and they take their time using them. Um, so we'll, we've seen both and we've studied both extensively at Crime Stoppers. What are the numbers like in Houston? I mean, well, just last year in 2019, there were 300 investigations just in our area, 79,000 cases across Texas. Um, of the 300 cases, half were minors, 75% of those uh, were um, exploited online. Um, and let's not forget, we believe that that's severely, severely underreported. We ask people to think about the runaway numbers in Houston right now. They say that any given day, thousands of kids have run away. Um, those runaways may not be real runaways. Those may be girls or boys who were lured away by trafficking rings. Yes, they willingly walked out of their homes, but they had no idea what they were going into. Um, and by law, a minor cannot choose. Yes, for, 
14 year old, years old and up, you can consent to have a sexual relationship. But a minor, anyone under 18, can never consent to be prostituted, can never consent to sell their body right. for, for money. So um, whether or not these kids walk away willingly, it's, it's against the law. And we have a duty, a moral obligation, and a, a social obligation to step in and protect these children. And I guess on that note, how, um, how can we bring more awareness um, about this issue to our community in Houston? Don't be afraid of it. You know, it's not a stigma that you want to run away from and be afraid of. It's an empowering movement that we want to take hold of and say, look, we're going to protect our kids. And, and not just my kids, your kids, your kids, all of our children. Um, we're going to have the proactive, tough conversations. We are going to sort of shed light on this horrific crime so that it cannot thrive in our cities. We're going to make sure our kids are doing everything they want to do, but they're smart. They're critical thinkers. They're um, aware of the risks and dangers that they're making smart choices. I, I go into schools and I'll say, listen, I want you guys, I'll be in front of high school kids and I'll say, I want you guys to post like celebrities. And I'll look, I've done this before and I look at like the teachers in the room and they're like, why is she telling her kids to post like celebrities? Wrong with this? this is not the message we expected. And I'll say, but you know, let's go with it. We follow, let's say Taylor Swift, pick Jennifer Lopez, pick somebody. I can't tell by their social media where they live. I can't. I can't figure out where their home office is or their, their main office. I, I, I have no, I mean, they'll say, what about Kim Kardashian? You can figure out where she is in real time. I said, of course you can, but Kim Kardashian probably spends a million dollars a year in security. Um, right. And I still can never reverse my way into figuring out where she lives. So post like a celebrity. If you want to share your life, great, do that, but do it really smartly where you've put up safeguards to protect yourself. Good point. That's great. I'm not sure if this is silly question, but, um, what is the difference between sex trafficking and cyber sex trafficking? So sex trafficking, and, and really they fall, all fa fall under the same bucket of exploitation of children and abuse of children. Uh, but sexual trafficking involves the child as a commodity. I mean, they're, they have uh, physical control of a child. There are um, predators who are actively, um, you know, unfortunately, the, there is no easy way to say it, that they are raping children. Um, cyber sex trafficking usually involves digital materials. So they figured out a way to gain video footage of a child and to continue to blackmail that child to provide more content. No one might ever place a hand on that child, but that child is now forced to create digital content. They are enslaved to the process of creating digital content, selling their bodies online. Um, that is, is really a, an illegal in every sense of the manner, horrific abuse for a child, a violation in every sense of the word, and another issue that we want to talk to children about. Think about it. That can be happening to a child who lives in the most beautiful neighborhood, um, right. in the greatest part of town. Mm -hmm. you know, Painted in community. Life. Right. You wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. That is really, um, I'm over here speechless with the information that you've just shared with us. Um, changing the subject a little bit, still talking about the same topic. Uh, Governor Abbott confirmed uh, yesterday that next year's school year will be online for the first two weeks. Um, what security measures would you recommend that our kids, or that we need to put on our kids' computers and mobile, 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 ugh, mobile devices before the school starts? Well, I think there's a few things. I always go back to start with conversations about what you should be sharing online and what you shouldn't be. Secondly, is just because we are living in this virtual world, um, you know, we it's it's very odd for all of us you know like i think of myself with my three girls early march there were very strict rules about you know none of the kids are really on social media but there were very strict, strict rules about you know you shouldn't be facetiming people and, and and don't do a lot of games and you know put the phone away and then all of a sudden after spring break it was like you're going to zoom your teacher why don't you facetime your friends uh, yeah. you, the only way to play to, with your friends is if you all get on the same game. So get so everything changed. Everything changed. We've got to come back a little bit and say we've got to remember to put the safety measures in place. You know, tracking services need to still be off on our phones. You don't want your kids online where anybody they're engaging with can get the exact address of your home. Um, or if they, you know, end up going out and about for whatever, wherever they are, you want to make sure that that's secure. The types of conversations where they have the video chats, um, the length of time, the time of day, you want to still create safety measures to protect your children. And then 
a lot of people don't think of things like securing their home networks, you know, two, two factor identification, I think is really, really important for all of us. It's something that we should all be doing on our social media accounts and our home accounts, um, firewalls where people can't infiltrate your home network. Um, all of those things remain, you know, we talked about that before, but it's even more important now with COVID since we are really living our lives virtually. Yeah. So any apps or websites for security protection you would recommend? I, there's a few um, people used to talk about Net Nanny and that's great. I really like Bark and it's, um, I think it's $9 a child and they monitor, or $9 a family, and they monitor all social media um, algorithms. They look for keywords, suicidal language, sexual content. Um, you work with them to figure out the parameters of what you want us to watch in your children. Mm -hmm. I'll say it's, it raises an interesting point because I've talked about this with other parents that say, oh no. I don't want to monitor my children. I just, they deserve privacy. And it's like, oh no, not in this house. You know, our kids of course deserve privacy, but when they're having um, open-ended conversations with any person across the globe, as parents, we have a duty to be monitoring that. And I mean, I guess everybody knows their child, everybody knows the maturity, and of course rules change depending on age and maturity, but I've always been hesitant to say kids deserve privacy online. That's a predator's dream statement. Right. And so we kind of shy away from that. And times have changed. So you want to just proceed with caution. Um, so yeah. this may be a, of a weird question, but what time of day does a predator typically uh, target our kids? Or is, is there such thing? There isn't. They are looking for your, they're, they're there to respond to your child's habits and behavior. So if they get the ding, ding, ding that, hey, little Lindsay has just posted that she's sad, she's depressed, she doesn't like the way she looks, she's just gone to a fight with her best friend, that predator is going to be there. Um, like she got into a fight with her mom or her dad, that predator is going to be there. And it may not be the predator, but the person that predator has assigned to little Lindsay. Remember, these are networks. They are networks and their goal, they are seasoned. Their goal is to maximize their connection to your child and they have people working for them. I'll never forget, we were um, working with the sheriff's office and one of the undercover um, deputies who deals with human trafficking said, was sharing a story about a freshman at one of our Houston universities and how one of the traffickers she was following um, took a picture of a first year freshman. It was about the first week of school. And they described her as blonde with her glasses, holding her book, just walking through campus. And the predator took a picture of her. And he posted it on his social media. And he said, I'm going to get this, used a curse word, by the end of the year. So it showed he identified a target. And by he knew it's going to take time. But he was mapping out his plan to follow her through the end of the school year to try to maximize that, that connection. So um, you know, software is important, conversations are critically important, but predators work around the clock. That is absolutely mind blowing. It is disturbing. Yeah. Um, and I would just so tell us how does Crime Stoppers help uh, with this insanely um, disturbing situation? Well, we won't shy away from it. And we believe that community engagement is a huge, plays a huge, huge role in the proactive protection of all of us. That com critical conversations can really help these young kids start to notice when they see signs of grooming and say, wait a minute, no, 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 I'm not gonna fall into this. Um, not only are we in the schools, we were in the schools boots on the ground up until March, we'd reached over 1.2 million kids through face-to-face -face conversations, but we moved quickly virtually. We do many presentations virtually. We talk to um, parents, we talk to kids, we talk to school administration, we, we talk to counselors, we talk to school-based law enforcement. We are going to be wherever we can be to get these critical messages out. And then we are very unique in the sense that we have a really active tip line. And that tip line is working around the clock with law enforcement to um, find wow. people wanted for a whole host of crimes and actually removing them from, from our, our neighborhoods and streets. So uh, we have a two-pronged approach, multi-tiered, multi-faceted, faceted, um, a lot of community partners, uh, but um, you know, we're very proud of it. Our Safe School Institute is a model. Governor Abbott has asked us to train the entire state, and we've been, we're well into two years of doing that. Um, we want to continue reaching more families and kids, messages that are not, not to scare or to make people paranoid, but to empower them to take yeah. safety into their own hands and protect their children. I love that. I love that. So I would love to have 
um, those tips and information so that we can share with our moms uh, and our families and our kids, our students. Um, but thank you so much uh, for joining us today. We greatly appreciate all the information. Super helpful. Uh, and thank you for listening to Coffee Talk Moms. Um, and check us out, uh, the link for upcoming trainings or workshops that Crime Stoppers may be having. Um, and please comment and prescribe or go to coffeetalks.moms. Coffee Talks, what's up with me today? Coffeetalkmoms.com. <laughs> Uh, for our co collection of upcoming videos and hot topics. Uh, and thank you again for watching. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, <laughs>